Hi, and welcome to another episode of Nexium on Trial, the Times Union podcast. Uh, we are back talking about the second episode of The Vow, an HBO documentary series, the title of which is Rapport. I am Casey Seiler, the editor in chief of the Times Union, and I am joined by Jessica Marshall, multimedia producer and producer of Nexium on Trial. And Rob Gavin, I am the Cops and Courts reporter for the Times Union. And just so folks know, Rob was in the courtroom uh, for the trial of Keith Ranieri, the federal trial that took place in 2019. I think we can all agree that the big revelation of the second episode of the second season of The Vow is that Nancy Salzman, uh, the longtime president of Nexium and its uh, corporate operations, has a hairless cat, which freaked me out the first time I saw it early on in this episode. Truly, the hairless cat named Mouse was the star of this episode. Yeah, uh, that's that's the immediate uh, thing that uh, jumped at me, that it was named Mouse. <laughs> and, and also this really strange babushka-looking uh, statue in her living room that the first time I saw it, I was like, why is this woman in peasant garb in, in Nancy Salzman's living room. It's um, really a bold artistic choice for a, a living room in Half Moon in a townhouse. Indeed. indeed. So uh, you know, let's talk, let's unpack a little bit. Nancy Salzman, as we've discussed, is is sort of the big get for the filmmakers of, of The Vow in this second season, which um, uses as, the, you know, sort of the, the spine of its plot the federal trial in Brooklyn of Keith Ranieri. Uh, By the time he went to trial, of course, Nancy Salzman, as well as all the other co-defendants in uh, the federal case against Nexium, all of them women, had pleaded guilty. So what did we think of the portions of the Nancy interview that we got in this episode? I think that Nancy is doing... A lot of what happened when she was at Nexium, which was putting a happy face on the company that was the creation and run essentially by her, but run for Keith Raniere. Nancy was the happy face of ESP and Nexium, the person who made it essentially normal um, for many of the people who came there. And it sounds like she's still doing that. There's this. 17,000 people had good results. Where are they? This is my company. You know, going well out of her way to separate DOS, the sex cult, so to speak, from Nexium, which really gets away from the fact that Nancy Salzman didn't plead guilty to anything having to do with DOS or sex trafficking. Nancy Salzman pled guilty to racketeering conspiracies, and the racketeering conspiracies involve the conspiracy to, to, to commit identity theft of the names of quote-unquote Nexium enemies, of names that were in her basement. Uh, that was part of it, as well as the fact that this is someone who was um, claiming on one hand that she was trying to just make the world a better place. But I think if you look at what she admitted to, and again, this is not something tied to DOS, what she admitted to was that she she was part of this conspiracy to get their names and that there was a lot of information in those boxes. And, and uh, the woman who was kept in the room for almost two years was, she had worked in a house in, in you know, essentially as Nancy's maid. I mean, so the, the, there was a lot of things that was going on in that company, as well as, you know, admitting that she had doctored law, uh, tapes to be used as evidence in a lawsuit against Rick Ross. That's the other part of that uh, guilty play. So those aren't things that had anything to do with DOS, and Nancy admitted to it. Uh, you know, I think there's a little bit of revisionist history going on there, but it's important to note that many, many people are not as familiar with Nexium as we are, and this is the first they're hearing from Nancy, and they're, they're, they will probably take it at face value the way many Nexium students probably did. Overall, in this episode, Nancy doesn't even touch any of that stuff. She just spends most of the episode complaining about how her business was ruined by things that were completely out of her control and that she didn't realize or know about. And also pouring honey all over Keith Ranieri, an earlier phase, the earliest phase of their relationship, where 
she presents him as being this sort of magus, you know, this kind of this kind of wizard who was running kind of uh, elaborate and in in her telling, at least in in this episode, really helpful psychological numbers on her. And this points to a problem with the the approach that the filmmakers of the vow have taken, in my humble opinion, which is they are allowing everyone to have their say unquestioned. You know, you never hear a questioner pressing, you know, on any of the interviews. That's one thing when you're talking with people who are victims or alleged victims. It is something else entirely when you are talking to collaborators or perpetrators of bad acts. And in the case of Nancy Salzman, uh, that is definitely uh, somebody in the, the latter group or the third group. As noted, she pled guilty. And I think that that really comes out, for example, when she's talking about neurolinguistic programming, which is the sort of uh, field of, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, um, you know, psychological modeling or training that Nexium was largely based on. They included a nifty little graphic, but from the way she was describing it, you would never know that there are many, many people who describe uh, NLP, as she uh, describes it, as a pseudoscience. And that's that's a, a real drawback in the approach here. And I also think, and this is something I, I'm afraid I'm going to, as the editor of the Times Union, I'm going to come back around to a lot, the way that these people are never asked to explain all of the coverage of Nexium that pointed up alleged abuses by Keith Ranieri, at the very least extremely problematic treatment of women, especially young women, that the Times Union reported on in 2012. The, to, in the vows telling, uh, or at least in this season so far, the first breach, which was sort of the, the scales dropping from everybody's eyes, was the fall 2017 story in the New York Times that exposed DOS. And that is, it's really hard for me to take. Yeah, it's interesting because you look back, it was 2012 when Secrets of Nexium came out. And Secrets of Nexium, that uh, series by the Times Union, that was actually an exhibit in the trial. The reporters and the former editor of the Times Union were both people that were among those quote unquote enemies of Nexium in the basement of Nancy uh, Salzman. So to, to act like I had no idea what was going on, there's also the very long documented history, which is also in that series, about Nexium's penchant for weaponizing the legal system. So many of really the darker parts of Nexium, in some ways, have nothing to do with DOS. And you know, Nancy seems a little taken back at the notion that the word sex cult, if DOS never existed, let's just pretend DOS never existed. Keith Raniere was sleeping with more than 20 different members in Nexium. He was sexually involved with number of women. And in those instances, he was telling them the same things that a lot of the women in DOS later complained about, putting them on you know, you should have X amount of calories, you need to do this, controlling, sleep deprived, many of the same type of uh, mental anguish. And if you just listen to the victim impact statements of some people who were involved with him who were not in DOS, it's a, a lot of the same type of complaints. If you listen to Kathy Russell, who was a co-defendant of Keith Raniere, and just listen to what came out when uh, she was sentenced and some of the other people uh, when they were sentenced, even Nancy Salzman herself and the way he treated her, I mean, to act like this was just, you know, every this is just DOS and my company, oh my, you know, where is this coming from? Yeah, you know, I just keep going back to the fact that this is the happy face put on Nexium. And uh, Nancy Salzman, you know, she she comes off. In a way, it's kind of like Keith Raniere. You know, he can come off very charismatic. He can come off very disarming seems almost harmless. You know, he's, he's giving this look to Mark Vicente, as Mark describes, of, oh, hey, you know what? I'm here for you, kind of. And that's what you hear a lot when you talk to people who are in Nexium. 
Keith Raniere met people where they were at. Nancy Salzman, she comes in, she looks the part of someone who could be a down to earth. She's like, just a, I'm just a middle, you know, I'm just a middle aged woman from America. I'm just middle class American woman. That was another telling moment. There's a, a sequence where she talks about, I believe she's going down to Mexico to run a training for ESP and she is taken aside and advised, you've got to, you got to up your wardrobe game. And she goes back to Keith and she's sort of, uh, she says she's appalled by the expense. Oh, the amount of money that she would spend on these. And, and Keith says, hey, if you need to spend $20,000 on a new kind of business wardrobe, go ahead and do it. Which once again, pointed up a, a question that I really wish, wish had been asked, which was, Hey, how much money were you making off this? What was your annual salary as Nexium's president? Money, and this is something we talked about the, when we spoke about the first episode a week ago, money is left out of this discussion. And we, we mentioned a, a very good NPR piece on the vow, and it mentions when Nancy gets a call from Sarah Edmondson, who is, you know, the really the whistleblower with or the, the prime whistleblower within Dawson, within Nexium. And Nancy said that Sarah, who ran uh, Nexium trainings or ESP trainings up in Vancouver, had canceled a bunch of classes and refunded everybody's money. And Nancy seems very irate and said, you know, that was our money. Well, how much was it? You know? It was very different from, for example, the sequences that take place in the trial where they are recreating the trial through recreated audio and very, very good computer graphics. And there you get the, the kind of fact finding. You get the testimony. You are allowed to hear both you know, uh, excerpts of both the, um, the prosecution and the defense asking questions of what have so far been, of course, the prosecution witnesses. It's interesting. The first witness, and she was a woman who uh, was very effective, I think, at the trial, really put you right into the world of Nexium right away. And she was from England and as someone who was in ESP Nexium for a long period of time. And you could hear when I was in court, you could hear her testimony that this woman was very, very much a person who did not want to be there. She was someone who was married. She had met uh, her husband through Nexium, and this didn't come out in last night's episode, but to get an idea of how controlling this organization was, Keith Raniere did not want her and her husband sleeping together, and had made that very clear that they should not. And through Claire uh, Bronfman, you know, he had made that, that very clear, and then the woman got involved in DOS, and the way she described entering DOS is the way many women have, that it's it's talked about as a sorority. And if you look at the way Keith Raniere is on video, talking about how it's different from Nexium. But here's the thing, the same pyramid type approach, that same sort of Ponzi scheme-esque, you know, it's almost like the old commercial where it used to come on years ago of you told a friend and then you told a friend and then you told a friend. I mean, that's a that's the, the business model for, for many things in Nexium. And DOS is one of many, many, many companies. Now, technically, it's not within Nexium, but Nexium was really an umbrella of a bunch of companies controlled by uh, Ranieri. You have this whole company in itself, the classes, they're based on that, where people are paying upwards of $5,000 and more for these classes and intensives, and oh, you can take more. And you know, it's not like, Nobody ever pointed a finger at this coursework for not having issues. I mean, it's been called like a pyramid scheme. So for Nancy to sit there and say, hey, that's our money, like it's clean. And just keep in mind, this is a group that talks about being ethical, right? I mean, this is a group that talks about nobility and being ethical. Well, the leader of the, the Vancouver group saw something unethical <laughs> and tried to do the ethical thing and give people back their money. And the president is saying, hey, that's our money. And this is the same person, you know, who is in a home where the feds found more than five hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in her basement. There was a moment, uh, actually, there were two moments throughout the episode that I thought took kind of a subtle, 
I don't know, jab at Nancy Salzman and what she was doing. There was one moment where they had some um, audio from a conversation that she'd had with Keith, where Keith said, what do you think is the worst thing that someone could call you? And you hear Nancy Salzman like very softly say, a liar. The other one was uh, when Nancy was driving around, she was driving from her half moon condo to her old house. And she was talking about how she can't go anywhere without asking permission. Um, which I thought was like a real uh, powerful bit of irony, given what we know about DOS and what we learned about it in the last season. So I think there were some moments where the filmmakers kind of subtly tried to push back on Nancy a little bit. But um, on the whole, Casey, your point about letting her speak unfettered uh, really took the show, I think, this particular episode. I will never not love interviews with defense attorney Mark Agnifilo where he is soulfully describing his sense of duty to defend Keith Ranieri and how, you know, he knows the people are counting on him to, to do this, not only for, um, for Keith's, you know, uh, life and freedom, but also for, for his life's work. Like he's defending Albert Schweitzer or something. It just, it will never not be funny to me. And that's really, when you look at it, that, that, that's how Keith was revered in Nexium. When you look at the tapes of him speaking to the group, you sit there and it almost reminds you of those old religious movies where they would show the person playing Jesus talking to a group. I mean, it's like he's the center of attention in all of these discussions and, and, and people are looking at him with these, their eyes are just fixated on him and What's interesting, and I'm glad the show did get into this part about the fact that if you raised an issue with something in Nexium, the immediate pushback was, well, that's on you. You know, if you talk about the curriculum, if you talk about Keith, if you start pointing fingers, the immediate response is that, well, that's got to be an issue that you have, that you're, that you're someone having an issue with this. And it's still happening even in this episode where Mark Vicente, they talk about him testifying and he talks about him testifying and Keith Ranieri's reaction is it's not about what he's saying, but he makes it about Mark. You know, he says, when I was watching him on the stand, it was very sad. It was like a death. Please don't lie. I think he wants to believe he has to bring me down. So he makes it about Mark, not the information he's saying. You know, and the same thing a little bit with Nancy. She's like, I really loved Mark and I felt like we were friends and it's like, well, yeah, but now this has come out and you pled guilty to what's come out in many cases. It, this shouldn't be a shock. And then, which I think is really the most interesting part of the episode, is that Nancy, and again, this part, I'm not sure when it was taped, but she says that she's almost feels more anger at Sarah Edmondson than she does at Keith Ranieri. And she says, to the effect, I think she said something like, Keith, I think he just is the way he is. It's almost like, you know, boys will be boys kind of, kind of thing. Well, you know, that's just the way Keith is. But Sarah left me this message. It's like, uh, you got to with Keith, you just got to take the bad with the good. And yeah, she is definitely, at least in that portion of the interview, she is more upset, irate, whatever you want to say with Sarah Edmondson for leaving her an angry voicemail than, than she is with Keith for uh, everything that, that Keith did. It is, it, that is a very telling moment. I, I'm glad you mentioned it, Rob. And she so. has a quote where she says, I think everyone assumes I knew everything and I should have known about everything. Again, there were stories in the 2012 series, Secrets of Nexium. But go after that. I mean, Nancy is on video. This came out at the trial. And they showed part of this discussion uh, last night when Nancy was talking about the part where she says they abuse abuse. She's p- quoting Keith Ranieri philosophies that included from that same group of, of words there, that word salad, so to speak, Keith Raniere was quoted at the trial. They showed the video of him telling fellow Nexium members that young children are, quote unquote, perfectly happy having sex with adults and that you know, some children are adult-like and that people, what they call abuse is 
uh, you know, that, so they abuse abuse. And Nancy was recorded parroting these exact words to a group at a, the Jeunesse meeting. That was a, a woman's group within Nexium. So again, you know, you, you have the secrets of Nexium, which mention underage girls being abused allegedly by Keith Raniere. You have his own words about, quote unquote, adult like uh, children. And this is all before the information about DOS comes. So to sit there and go throw your arms up like I had no, no idea to say that it strains credibility, I think, is certainly a question someone might want to ask themselves. But again, I said it before and I'll say it again. Many people are going to be watching this and they don't know Nexium as well as people in the capital region may know Nexium or me or you may know Nexium or Sarah uh, Edmondson or any of these people familiar know Nexium and they're going to watch it and they may buy into it because she comes off well. No, she has good rapport. She's very convincing and she can build a rapport with her audience. That's how she was able to do what she did for 20 years or 40 years, if you ask her. All right. Well, I, let's leave it there. Thanks very much for listening. We will be back next week with another episode of Nexium on Trial. I'm Casey Seiler. I'm Jessica Marshall. I'm Rob Gavin. If you're enjoying Nexium on Trial, be sure to check out its sister podcast, The Eagle. I'm Jessica Marshall, host of The Eagle. Each week, we'll take a look inside the newsroom at the Times Union, the capital region's oldest and largest newspaper. We'll discuss the week's top stories, and we'll talk to the award-winning reporters who write them. Listen at timesunion.com or wherever you get your podcasts.